brother. Okie dokie. I think I'm somewhat ready. Somewhat. Have a little patience if you're just walking in there. <coughs> Hello, Johnny. How are you? It's good to see you. Hey. All right. Well, this is a, I believe, 14 by 16 inch uh, canvas board. I actually did this sideways turned flower yesterday. It will disappear. I did not um, like it. Um, when I did the live stream, it was horrendous. And um, so I decided to uh, paint over it. So if you look at your upper left where my head is, um, you'll see um, the palette to which I'm going to cover everything up with. So it will be a nice light gray with a tinge of orange, which will make it an orangish gray. So basically it's just a paint mixture. I'm just going to use to cover all of this, uh, all of this up. So I'm going to get right on to it. I will open up the, uh, lid here a little later on to, um, do whatever type of scene that I choose to do. Okay, so basically, I just got the paint here and I'm just going to cover up my flower. And that's basically the thick and thin of it. Just cover it up with basic gray. Now, as I'm doing this, hopefully I got enough to, uh, cover all of this just x strokes just cover it up i'm gonna add orange to this as i move this right along hello gina how are you i'm just doing a little cover-up action of a flower flower that i did yesterday i did not really care for and um there's no glycerin or anything on here it's just the paint just the black and the white just cover everything up here no glycerin just regular paint just to block stuff up not that I've added the black and white I will use uh, orange which is gonna turn it kind of a weird muddy orangey whatever color that's just to kind of color it color it a little bit here and there just cover the whole thing up nothing in particular nothing special just me covering it all up. It's starting to dry as I'm talking to you. Actually, it's starting to tack up. So there will be no hint of a flower underneath this at all. This is just me just redoing the whole canvas. Just cover it up. Make it go away. Look like nothing ever happened here. That's all. No more, no less. Then I'll just build from here. There we go. Nice slate of gray. Hello, Van. How are you? I just covered up the floral I did yesterday. It was something that I really did not like. So, hello, Madonna. How are you? I just decided to cover it up. No more, no less. And so while I'm doing all of that, I'm gonna grab me a quick industrial towel here. And I'm gonna get some rubbing alcohol. I'm gonna clean off my little tray here. And this, we'll see what we can come up with this evening. Yes, I use rubbing alcohol on this coffee lid just to clean off the uh, previous mess I've done with an industrial towel. Um, industrial towel can be reused. So 
a little more sturdy than your bounty whatever quicker picker upper you use all right so we cleaned off that tray set it down there okay let's open up the lid here so we have little cad yellow ultramarine green uh, uh alizarin crimson titanium white thalo blue and some black all right fantastic seems you have a little trouble with bird anatomy she's got a little beak troubles somebody's ringing me in i had, I had helped them um help them out so i'm just replying all right <coughs> let's take a fan brush and let's just go into our white let's just have a little fun take our fan brush just half of the fan brush with paint all right and we'll just come up here we'll just start from we'll just start we'll start here we'll just start here and just start waving stuff around here just twirling it and moving it around something like that it's all right no biggie take the other half let's go here let's just go up here and just twirl it around twirl it just kind of stuff like that just twirl it around let's take a little bit of blue and do the same exact thing with the blue. Let's twirl the blue up in here like this. We'll twirl some of this blue in the corners too. Right here in the corner. Just kind of spin it around there. Just twirl it, spin it, spin it, twirl it. Uh, we'll just add a little bit of that twirling action up around in here too. Just kind of press and twirls, let it have its own way, play around in there like that. Uh, let's get a little white mixed in with that blue and we'll play around with it up in here a little bit. Kind of pat it around. That's not strong enough for me. Let's get some more. Yeah, really play with it in there like that. I think that's good enough. That's fine clean off the brush I'd like to thank you guys for coming in and watching me well then fantastic if something starts to frustrate you leave it alone for a little while and then come back, go back to it a little bit later we're gonna take a mop brush here smaller mop brush than I usually mess with let's go with the white that's kind of Play around with it there, twirl some interesting little shapes in there. We'll go into the blue, we'll play around with that, twirl it in there. Especially where it's dark, kind of play around with it. Now, the way I'm seated, I am seated to the extreme left of my canvas. And so I do have a studio light on, so it's really shiny over here in this area. So it's hard for me to discern what the heck is going on over there a little bit but we'll get it straightened out as we twirl some of this around i'm not really forcing the issue with the twirling just to smooth out stuff then i'll start to continue the build from there so i'll be adding more to this as we go on like I say, even right now, there's no semblance that a flower was even actually around there. Okay, let's go back to our fan brush. And we're going to get some more twirls, all right? I'll pull the white out a little bit. And we'll just kind of tap some, something familiar in there like that. Let's pull off some more white. I'm not cleaning the brush, won't need to at this point. Um, maybe a little something over here. And we'll continue that around in here. Bring some of that around in here. 
here like that. Now I'll start to do the twirls a little bit on purpose. I'm gonna need a little more white. Scooping up what little bit of white I do have. I got a little red in there, that's okay. That's all right. Just, we'll mess with that for a second. Once again, clean a brush extremely well. Of course, it looks a little crazy, but we will we'll work with that. And now I'll gently start to form some things here. I'm not going to over blend. I won't over blend. We'll try to save some of that red in there. A little bit there. We'll come up in here and we'll kind of twirl some of those. Then we'll lightly fade some of that out there. some of that out bring some of that out we'll start to kind of blend this down blend that down a little bit the more you twirl it around the more it will blend in with the color you got that preceded that color okay so I'm looking at it, seeing where I want to kind of move stuff around and all of that. I could clean off this brush. This mop brush is it once you get caked with paint, you know, you're gonna have to give it a good, good cleaning. This mop brush retains a lot of water, so you clean it pretty good. No notification probably because I didn't do the thumbnail and everything until just a few minutes before I decided to go on that's why I would usually um, do better than that so that was kind of my fault and I had time to do the notification and then post it on my channel I just didn't do it today so that's why no notification but if you subscribe to my channel um, it should just pop up on your um, on your phone or computer that I'm live. <coughs> Excuse me. I think that should be enough cloud play. for what I want to do anyway. Okay, that should be all right. I'm just wiping off the brush. Like I said, this was the painting of the flower, but I just turned it sideways. It's now a landscape um, painting. I'm gonna gather up some. Hey, Keely, how are you? Yeah, that happens from time to time, Keely. I will bust out a sneeze every once in a while. All right. Um, let's go with a palette knife today. Let's, 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 uh, let's dig a little black out and we'll just kind of straighten it out here. So we got a little, little black. We'll kind of cut across that guy. All right. Oh, uh, what kind of get us some rough looking mountains here? Now, when you do mountains, make them particularly kind of kind of a uh, well, it's really up to you how you want your mountains to look. I kind of like mine on a ruffian edge. I'll 
drag some of this down here. Don't have to have it particularly, you don't have to lay the paint on too thick. Okay, basically. And we'll come down here and add a little something here and kind of go out that way. All right, and we'll we'll do the rest of the, well, we'll just do the rest. I'll just bring it out here a little bit, just like that. Don't know if I got any on the other side of that. Something like that. Believe it or not, that will be that will be a mountain. I promise. Let's get a three-quarter brush, something to kind of drag that paint out. All right. Okay, well, well, not this, it's too narrow. Bear with me, let's use this guy. We'll use this fellow. All right, we'll just kind of take it and just drag it. It's thin. And we'll just kind of drag it out there. Just like that, just take it and drag it out. We'll make the mountain interesting, I promise. And I'm just dragging out the paint, just like that. Let's drag it out, drag it right out, drag it. Okay, something like, th like that. Put it right on out there. <laughs> we'll concentrate on the mountain for a little while. Why not? All right, we'll put this brush back. Let's take a, well, we'll just take the side of this brush. I'm pretty lazy today. Just this. Now, the reason why I, I use this brush is because of this, the wide bottom here. And you lay it flat and you kind of twist, kind of fade it in there. Cause the paint's still pretty tacky. So I'm just kind of blending out the bottom a little bit. No glisten or anything. The paint's still wet, still somewhat tacky. Okay. And then I'll just take it and just nice little egg strokes kind of blend it out of there. So it looks like it's just like suspended out of nowhere. Something like so. Okay. So it almost looks like half volcano already, but you blend that bottom edges out, blend it into whatever color. And like I said, the paint's still pretty tacky. So I can get away with that. A tongue depressor, sure. If you um, if you um, interesting a tongue depressor. I can't reach. Let me see if I can reach and get something here. Since you did mention tongue depressor, let me see if I, my arms are long enough to come over here. This isn't really a tongue depressor, but somewhat in the in the same vein of one. Almost knocked a bunch of brushes over trying to get it. Just put that right there. All right, not really a tongue depressor, but something like this you're talking about. Popsicle stick. Okay. All right. Um, look down here with me. Let's get a little bit of... Um, I guess we'll mess with the black here. I'm going to take it... I'm going to just kind of bend this here. Well, I'll just snap it in half, so it's no big deal. I'll take a little bit of red with our black. All right, so we'll mix it with our tongue depressor here. Oh, let's get a little white in there. We'll stir it up here. I need, actually, I need a little bit more than this. But uh, we'll we'll work with it. So, um, yes, we'll make a, a popsicle stick mountain, I guess. Keely said tongue depressor. All right, we'll take our little popsicle stick. And we'll make a popsicle stick mountain. Um, I actually need a longer popsicle stick. Let me wipe that off and get a longer one because I snapped this one in half. I should have kept it. Let's get another tongue depressor or a popsicle stick. I'll use a longer one. Okay, so we'll swipe some 
of this. Well, let's actually, let's make some more. We'll make some more. We'll get some black, we'll get some red, put it in there together, mix it in there. Mix it right in. Some more black, put it in there with the red. Get a touch of white. There we go. So we just got a different flavor of uh, gray here. Who would think I would make a mountain using a popsicle stick, but interesting challenge. Let's see what we're gonna do for Keeley in a popsicle stick or tongue depressor. Okay, I've got a nice little mix here. I'm gonna thin that right out here with the popsicle stick here. Thin it out, okay? Because you don't really need too much. And now I'll go with a little swipe across with the popsicle stick. Let's see what we got with our popsicle stick. So I'll just take the popsicle stick, go real thin. It's gonna be hard for me to grasp it without bending it a little bit. But I think I'll just use the narrow edge. We'll see. Keep it flat as you can. And once you keep it flat as you can, you start building your mountain with your popsicle stick. So let's build a mountain with a popsicle stick because Keeley said so. Now, if at all possible, you would use the wider edge, to be honest, but be very light because you can gather up quite a bit of paint with this fella. Come up over here a little bit. Popsicle stick mountain for Keeley. I mean, you see the, the narrow edge, you kind of bring that paint out a little bit. And use the flat edge and bring it down. Actually, let's deal with the flat edge. I kind of like that flat edge, the thin edge there. Now I'm working with thick paint also, so that actually helps. A popsicle stick mountain. Interesting. Now, the deal with a popsicle stick is that it really needs to be bent. All right, but I will, I will challenge myself with this fellow. And we're gonna put highlights and all sorts of interesting things on Mr. Popsicle Stick Mountain here. Vermont, this is Keeley's idea. She doesn't have a palette knife, she wants to use a Popsicle Stick, so I'm gonna see if it can actually be done. Popsicle Stick Mountain, ladies and gentlemen. Popsicle Stick, ladies and gentlemen. I've never painted a mountain with a Popsicle Stick. It is a um, alizarin crimson and black for this guy. Okay, hmm. popsicle stick mountain. All right, let's go with a little bit of titanium white. And a little bit of phthalo blue. And a slight touch of black. Very odd combination. There. I did bend it, but not all the way through. Thin it, thin. Okay, now I was able to get some off of there, or I was able to bend it a little bit. So 
so that actually helps me okay okie dokie let's play now that I've bent it it should be easier for me to manipulate so I'm gonna come around the side here kind of play around with that a little bit This is actually the opposite side of the mountain that I'm working with. There we go. You like the red on the mountain? I'm going the opposite direction with the blue. get to get it as flat as possible against the um, the canvas a little bit of blue slight touch of white and a touch of black slight touch of black darken that up a little bit just to grade up a bit mix it in there flatten it out get some texture underneath this guy and have at it It's getting there. It's getting there. Like I say, this is the first time I've used it. The thing is, with a popsicle stick, is knowing where the flat part is so you can actually get some of this paint to travel a little bit. Basically. You can just maneuver it. Have it break up a little bit. You got some around in here. Okay. Let's get a little bit of white. A little more white. Pop it in there. Stir it around a little bit. You still got texture and all of that fun stuff. I know where it's gathering up at. It's gathering up toward the tip. Just be careful. Light touches. There we go. I, now I know where the paint's gathering. I can work with it. Just, just pay attention to where the paint's gathering and be careful. you mean able to maneuver it a little bit
Just getting some more white, mixing it in with the blue so it's not totally white. Okay, I'll just tap like that. And when I tap it, I get little, see those little, I moved the, moved the uh, you see those little edges there underneath the popsicle stick? That's what you um, want to get at there. And be very careful. And you just kind of tap away. Kind of tap, tap and drag, tap, tap, bring it down here a little bit. Tap, you just, see you tap, you get your pattern, see? I'm just exaggerating the tap, much like that. And you can kind of slope it to wherever you feel you need it to be there. Don't worry about stuff like that. That's not what we're concerned about. See if we got any more stuff I can manipulate down there. Get some more. Play around over here a little bit. Broke off on me, but that's okay. Build some toward that edge there. Now, once I got it toward the edge, be careful. Cause all you need is a little slight tap and you just drag it on. See, the texture from the other colors helps bring all of that out. Come up around in here a little bit. done play with popsicle sticks let's take um the brush and we'll tap a little bit up into the mountain we tap and go downward just like that tap tap okay and once again very lightly very lightly fade some of that out very lightly fade it out a little bit Okay, now let's take a little bit, we'll use the same brush, why not? We'll use a little bit of that blue, a little bit of that titanium white. We're going to go just below the mountain a little bit, just up in here, maybe up around in here a little bit. We're going to do a little bit at a time because I don't have any glycerin to coat this. So we're going to kind of take the brush and we're going to kind of stir it around there. I have to be careful because there's no glycerin, so I have to press a little bit more. But be careful because you don't want to totally phase out your mountain. So you're basically concentrating on the little mist area that we're going in. So you can go a little, little strong handed with it because I'm not working with glycerin. But it's all right because we can continue to build using this stuff. So I'm stirring, getting most of the paint off of the brush. And as it wears away, you go, you sneak a little bit up into the mountain. You just lighten your hand pressure. Go up in here a little bit. So you're marrying the two together. Follow me. That's all. And you just, we're going to keep working at this. So you're more or less scumbling cloud areas into your mountain. Okay. So 
but this is definitely dry definitely dry brushing 100 and you just keep working at it the more paint you're wearing off the brush with this beat down brush the more misty it's going to look and you're just building up layers very thin layers I'm only got the tip of my brush in the white paint I'm pressing pretty good until I get up into the mountain a little bit but you're continuing the circular motions and you're gonna keep building all right so it looks like everything's just enveloping the mountain okay let's go up in here let's add a little light up in here too it's just the tip of the brush I'll show you slowly see right in here tip of the brush that's it all the rest of the brush is gonna do the handiwork let's go up around in here and let's go up or up around in here turn the brush around and just kind of work it all in there see this work it in there this too press give it a good press circular motion you see how you just keep working at it you keep working that brush as you can tell by the way this whole camp is shaking once again no glycerin um bruce this was the flower that i painted last night in case you're wondering okay cool let's add a little more of that that well yeah we may around in here and we'll bring it downward I'm just adjusting the focus so you guys can see it a little more just like that now remember you can adjust your hand pressure all right a lot of that mountain is already dry also okay much like that nice wild woolly look there okay Just cleaning off the brush. <laughs> Going green, mom has a glycerin stash. Let me find out. I'm gonna go to my palette knife. I'm just gathering some of this blue gray stuff here I might add a little more white to it thin it out you might you guys might not be able to tell because it's, it's essentially the same color I'm gonna get a nice little swipe with the palette knife there um last week I think I did a mountain with a credit card I'm gonna go I'm gonna kind of And what I'm doing is actually graying, graying this stuff out. Some of it. Very light touch. So I'm just graying it all out. I'm not getting rid of it, all of that. But I'm just graying it out a little bit. Don't think I have too much more of that left. I don't. Very light. Okay, um, I need a little more oomph on the other half of the mountain there. So we'll kind of add a little activity here. Come here, come downward a little bit. Just play around with that darkness a little. That's all. Just a little bit. Nice little shadow there coming around. I think I need a little deeper shadow oh, on this fella right here. Come on down, come on. Just like that. 
bring some of that depth down in there like that okay we can leave we can leave mr mountain alone um we got the clouds a little fog bank thing happening there all right okay let's take um I want to yeah let's use this brush because I haven't used this brush in a while and um, I think everybody's familiar with one of these brushes as you, as you can see who that is that's one, that's one of these guys here all right so we'll, we'll play with this this takes quite a bit of paint okay uh, let's dip into what little bit of black we have and let's go into our yellow and we'll kind of pop it in there like that a little more a little more yellow pop that yellow in there just like so I'm gonna dip into a little bit of water not glycerin just water loosen it up a little bit get it fairly dark add some more black Sharon J hello welcome Okay, let's play. Let's play, oh, right about in here. All up in here like this. Turn the brush around. Now, if I find myself pressing too hard, that means I'm running out. This is thick paint, so I'm just dipping into more water. Watch. Light touch. Side of the brush. Come on down. Look at the tree patterns you're getting. Without even trying too hard. Let's go all up here like this. And we'll bring one way up here like that and narrow him out. Just that. Like that wide. And we'll just take it and kind of move the brush around. I like it kind of thick in the center and we'll play around with the outside edges just like so and just keep playing around with it we're going to use this brush to get interesting uh, highlight shapes out of this but we're going to press pretty good down here press pretty fairly well down in there let's come down here let's continue that on i'm dipping in more black just stirring it around here go into that Let's get some more what's left of that yellow. Put it right in there. Have no fear. Mix it right in there. All right. Get a little touch of water. The reason why I'm not using glycerin at this stage is one, I want the paint to dry. Okay. And plus it, 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 like I say, once again, light touch will be all you need at this, at this point. I want my centers to be a little, little, little dark, but we can bring all this downward. Let's bring it all down, down. Right now it's blocking in color bring it downward all right and if you dare to do so just bring it go straight down with it go straight down just like that bring it straight down don't make it even just bring it straight down we'll we'll continue this as we move on I ran out of yellow but that's to be expected but it's okay so we'll just add a little more yellow there like that all right let's go into our yellow a little bit and we'll bring it right here go into your titanium white to kind of bump up that yellow just a little bit okay all right a little bit of that ultramarine in there throw that in there just because uh, but look at my path look at or look at the shape I'm getting all right that should be more than enough I'm gonna get a tiny bit of water to loosen up that paint but I'm still going in that direction okay 
and you see the shape of the brush here. You see the shape of the brush. A light touch. Light touch. Light touch is all you need. See that? Light touch. And let's start one right here. Light touch, guys. Very light. Turn your brush around. Okay. Add interesting little groupings of that color. See this? Let's start here. Let's keep some of those dark. And then you lighten up a couple in the front there. Let's lighten that fellow up. Don't get rid of all of your dark. <clears throat> I'm going to turn my brush around because I have more paint on that on that end. And we'll just continue the light touch. I want to make sure that my head is out of the way. Just like that. Come around. Come down here. Add some of that down in there. This fella here. Turn the brush around. I'm gonna add a couple push. I'm doing a couple pushes here. So I'll just I'm taking the brush. I'm just giving it a little push. See that? Give it a little push. I'm gonna go upside down here. Give it a little push upside down so you put some of that in the water. Like that. See that? Just mimic it a little bit in the water. You don't have to be exact. Okay, bring some of that down there. Just like that. Pretty neat. Very lightly go downward. Very lightly, very light. Aim downward, aim downward. Don't press too hard, just aim it downward. Look at that. Look at that reflection. You're not even trying hard. You're just playing around. You follow me? All right. Let me see what you guys are talking about here. Well, it's good to see you here, Sharon. Yes, brushes are expensive. I wouldn't recommend buying expensive brushes. I do have very expensive brushes. As a matter of fact, I can show you a couple right now. And I barely use them. The bargain brushes will do you the same. If not better, they sure do seem to last longer. To be honest with you, but that's just my opinion. Okay, let's um, let's go into the same color. Let's add a little more, more black. Um, a little bit of red. I'm using the palette knife just to stir it. Uh, let's use some of this blue too. This bluish green. Essentially, I want mud. There we go. That's nice. That's nice mud. Yes, that's good healthy mud right there. So we're gonna use a good chunk of this mud. As you see, the more I stir it, the more mud it gets. All right. Here. Expensive. And expensive, but you rarely see me use them. They just sit there. One, they tend to be horrible at retaining shape no matter how much you try to take care of them. They, they, they just sit there and check this out. Here's the bargain brush, which retains the shape after I beat it half to death. Bargain brush. Okay. All right. Let's take some of this mud. And let's make some mud bank. Let's make a mud bank. Let's make a mud bank. Now, here's the thing with mud banks. Whether you're left or right handed. Okay. Um start out horizontally like like so now you probably can barely see this but you will in the highlight but like forming the mountain but keep it keep it horizontal and, and really you should go up i'm going backwards because i'm a lefty 
but you'll see as I as I go on here okay but you should actually go from here and go outward like that or from here and go outward whether you're left or right-handed um this is pretty dark all right but you'll, you'll see as I as I move right along here because I'm making texture remember I'm using thick um, heavy body paint okay so it's gonna leave a texture anyway and that's all I'm doing is, is building up a uh, land texture so when the highlights do come forth you, you'll understand why so I'm shaping it right now just to get some texture I think I'll have the texture go from the left to the right so I'll, I'll build it this way going in the opposite direction. I'll just build it this way going downward so I'm, I'm kind of changing direction of it but that's okay this is fine here this is this is okay all right you guys can't tell because I'm gonna get a little bit of yellow here is a little yellow a little bit of red so this is a uh, a lizard crimson and yellow right now I can get away with this really it's a lizard crimson a little bit of yellow and a slight a very slight touch of white there we go now you got this dirt color going on right there take a swipe across See that little bead right there you've built texture here be careful remember there's no glycerin there's no nothing just dry okay and I'll take it very lightly and I'll just go from the from the uh, side and I'll just kind of build in some some light texture here just like that just build in some land texture now I'm gonna drag it out a little bit there there just drag it out I don't want to add too much pressure to it but I just want to kind of this is very Bob Roth-esque type of technique here And just kind of and I'll bring some of this out like that we'll add a little more there to that, that edge there right up in there like so I think that's good enough okay now watch we're gonna bring all of that out let's take this wipe off this wipe some of this away we don't even need this we'll just wipe that on the towel let's take some white mix it right in there just like that doesn't have to be super bright white or whatever it's just going to mix in with whatever crud that i have there another light swipe nice thin swipe right across all right okay the thing with water even if your bank looks a little funny just uh sharpen that focus there even if your bank looks a little weird okay um i can probably bring it in a little bit because we're kind of done up above let's bring it in a little bit in the center of that right there because we're really concentrating here downward okay all right so um yes uh keely i do have uh, very inexpensive brushes here okay um when you do a shoreline um believe it or not no matter how crazy it sounds but keep your brush uh, horizontal um this is uh, what i mean let's start from and we'll start from right here okay watch keep horizontal horizontal keep it horizontal okay keep it horizontal and you can get your brush to move around it's going to start looking like uh, water patterns if you start to kind of zigzag it around like that but you keep it horizontal okay i'll try to go s slow here now as i come to the other side all right what you do is is you kind of put more weight on one end of the palette knife than the other um let's start from let's start from here put more weight on it i don't have enough 
white to kind of make that show like that. There we go. See that? Put more weight on one side than the other. And you get that effect. All right. far away even in this situation just give it a little tap angle your brush to where some of that paint comes off and just give it a slight tap like that because you're you're far away so little one little little tap keep it straight as you can and they're like I say they're far away so they're not really that long okay you kind of can generalize it a little bit I'm just gathering up some more white. I'll just pick up some more white, spread it out here. Now my white's being picked up, picking up the residual color of what I got down here on this paper, wax paper here. <coughs> As we get uh, closer to us, they get a little longer. Something like, you know, a little longer. You stagger them though. Don't have them, don't have them uh, too close to each other. Stagger them. All right. I can come out here and make them even, make them even longer or whatever. Bring that out a little bit more. It's looking the way it's looking because there is absolutely no medium on my, on my um. There's no medium at all on my board. This is all super dry. So I am not even painting wet on wet. It is wet on dry. And I'm really pressing the knife in there. Okay. Okay, let's go back to our round brush. Let's add a little, let's add a little color to some of this stuff. Um, let's go with our deep red. And I'm only going to go toward the tip of the brush. So I'm getting quite a bit of red here if I can scoop it out of there. And I'm going to add just a tiny bit of water to that just to loosen it up a fraction. Uh, I don't want to lighten up this deep red. And if you can get away with it, just use the corner of the brush. I should be close enough so you guys can see this. I'm going to start off a little high. There we go. And you kind of put some of that, that red up in there. Let's go higher up in here, just like so. So we're just adding a little color to that greenery back there. Just like that, we'll come up here a little bit. If these are just soft taps, to be honest with you. Bring some of that joy down here. Bring it right into the water, see that? Now it's not rushing water, so you can pretty much do almost a mirror image. All up in here, just like that. You got some one higher, so if he's higher, bring him lower, just like that. Okay, I kind of like how that looks, so I'm just cleaning off the uh, one inch brush here, it's a one inch round brush. Let's take that very same brush. Let's go into our yellow. Careful with your yellow. Now with my yellow, it's thick and I can probably get away with it. I'm just using thicker paint. Okay. So I can, I can probably get away with doing this without adding white to it. But let's pop some yellow in there. Oh, probably right in here like that. Boom. Just like that. Come a little higher with it like this. Come here. Just a few, a little up in there like that. Come in front of that red a little bit, bring some into the rocks. Very Bob Ross-esque type of painting that I, I really haven't done anything in the Bob Ross kind of vein in, in a minute, like that. And once again, 
you can't leave you leave it out the reflection put that put a little bit of that reflection in there like that come on in there like this bring it out there okay it kind of pops out at you something like that okay all right let's get a little bit of blue put it into that yellow let's get a little bit of titanium white put it in there brighten that up a little bit i'm gonna just drag this brush a little bit let's get a little more titanium white we're gonna drag the brush a little bit very light start out light you see the pattern it's gonna give and you work on the very outer rim of some of these guys just like like that just give a slight yeah that would work slight push so I'm gonna give a slight push just like that come down here a little right up in here get a nice interesting grouping up here on the top be careful turn your brush around in various ways bring some of that in there like that and bring some of that brightness down in there like that Bring some of that brightness in there just like so come up in here bring some of it in there now if you want you can drag it downward if you feel brave Boom, drag it downward up to you if you want to bring it down that far like so all right This is woman. Get the hell out of here. All right. So we have our. Let's see if this is focusing good, good enough for you guys here. Okay. So we've established. I'll draw this back a little bit here. Sorry guys, my elbow hit it. Okay, so we've established our clouds. We established our um, our uh, two our our uh, popsicle stick mountain. Okay, we established some of our greenery. We established some of the reflections. What's going on all up in here with the different colors? Okay, acrylic tends to. Um, flatten out after a while okay um what else yeah so let's do some foreground things here okay oh i guess we will use let's get the palette knife here let's raise this up and we'll zoom in a little bit because we're gonna focus primarily on the uh foreground here and we'll center it right here we'll touch the focus a little bit there keeping the focus um let's get the rest of this red here if i can scoop it all up i'll use a little bit of this red um we'll use a little bit of this blue we'll get a deep mar a maroon going here you just i'll use the white too why not red white and blue which makes a very wonderful looking mauve color but because of the white it's, it's, it's too light um all right therefore and because i really want to finish this 
we're gonna rush this right along. I usually don't use black, believe it or not. But we'll move this painting right around right along here. Use a little bit of black, that nice color. Just like that. Mix it right in there. It's gonna turn gray anyway. So I'm showing you actually different variances of gray. People think you add a black to a color, it just turns it black. No, it does not. No, as you can see, it turns it a nice rocky gray. See that? Add, if I add white to that, it will be a very impressive uh, rock color. But we just need a foundation right now. We just need a base. Okay, let's get a swipe of this. And we'll go right from, I think we'll just kind of do it right from here. Right from here. Right uh, from here. Don't worry about all this down below. I'm not. Uh, let's smooth it out ready. Right, right here. Let's smooth it out right around in there. Okay. All right. Uh, we'll kind of seal all of that in. We'll, we'll paint brush all of this. I just want to block it in. Just like this with the palette knife real quick. So we got one here. Just kind of like I said, I'll we'll just block that in. No big deal. Block it in there. Let's take the rest of this. And uh guess we'll make a higher one right about here. I know it's covering up some of the painting. Don't it's okay, don't cry about it. I'm not. Right here. Just like that. Okay, just like so. And we'll block all that in. Don't worry about none of this. Don't worry about none of that. Fret not. Don't worry. Uh well I guess we'll add a little bit of black in that. The black is mixing in with the residual stuff I had left behind. It's okay. If foreground stuff, it's going to be the darkest anyway. So, once again, hashtag don't panic. It's all right. It's okay. It will be all right. I promise. It will be okay. There. And we'll block some of that in with the same color. Why not? Let's get some more. We'll mix it right on the palette, or right on the, right in the painting, we'll just mix it right in there. It's okay. We're gonna take a brush to this anyway, so don't don't worry about it. Ah, uh, we'll darken it right up there, darken it. Come around here. There. We're gonna darken all that up. It's gonna be a totally different color once I put the brush to it. If I'm gonna put the brush to it, why am I using a palette knife? Palette knife spreads it better, that's why. And I'm I'm mixing red on the red on the board anyway. Alright. I am happy to see a whole lot of activity on my page. <laughs> and we're gonna take the brush. And we're just gonna make it solid. Just like that. Put it right in there. And basically, all I am is blocking in color. That's all. Right to the very bottom, block in color. This is our foreground. When you add a foreground like this, it obviously pushes everything else back. And that's all I'm doing, really just blocking in solid color. We'll make our craggy rocks with the highlights and shades when we get to that in a few seconds. Okay. You don't necessarily have to have the type of palette knives I have to do this. Um, you can use a credit card. You can use, um, you know, any instrument really, or go to get a, get plastic ones, like um, you know, get plastic ones like these guys. All right, whatever you feel you can use that helps you in your painting journey, use it. I'm only showing you the technique. What you do with it is uh, really on your own volition. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, let's get a little, little, let's get a little black going. Let's get a little bit of blue in that black. Um. There. Use some of this. 
So we got ultramarine, we got blue and black. Ultramarine, blue and black. What is ultramarine, blue and black going to do? It's going to give us another, when I add white to it, it's going to give us another version of gray. Okay. So let's add a little bit of titanium white to that. I'm going to end up getting more titanium white. There we go. I like that. Now, once I add this on here, this ultramarinish black color, um, it will darken up. I'm adding, getting a little more, a little more black to darken that up a little bit. You'd be surprised how much black you would need just to darken these colors. Okay. And this is where you get really interesting colors of gray also. Okay, see now that's a really deep greenish um, gray, which is going to be weird for a rock color. All right, I'll add a touch of... Why put on a palette knife instead of just using the brush? Texture. It's not a stupid question. A stupid question is a question you never ask. But that's why. Just really texture. And it's easier and faster to mix. And plus, if the paint's a little thick, like on this side, if it's a little thick, you can actually wear some of that away. Wipe some of that away. If it's too thick. Okay. But eh, it's okay. This is all right. Like I said, it adds te texture. You'll see in a second what I'm talking about. All right. Um, this is a plastic, just a plastic knife. Okay. Um, that's a little too green for me. And I don't have any red to kill it. When it's, say if it's more one color than the other, like it's more green. All right. To kill that green, you just use the colors opposite, which is red. Now red, which is a very strong, strong color in itself, it's very powerful. I won't use that much red with that green, but it will darken it up, as you can see as I'm doing this. Slide the paper back. It will brown it up, but you can see it's getting gradually. It, with every swipe, it's getting darker and darker. A palette knife is is excellent for mixing because it mixes very fast. All right. Okay, let's just take this little bit. I'm gonna spread it out real thin here. I'll spread it out thin like that. All right, okay. I might need to lighten that up a bit actually. So let's gather that back, it's too dark. It's dark, like I like it, but it's too dark compared to what I'm um, painting on. Let's get a little bit of white. Now watch what happens when I add that white to it though. All right, watch, it turns gray. See how many different flavors of gray we've had this evening? See that? Add a little more white, just a little bit. All right. And look, it gets even more gray. So you get a color mixing class this evening. Okay. Okay, that's good enough. Let's take it in a nice thin swipe, right? Um, thin layer of paint going right across. Let's take a nice thin swipe. Well. Mm, yeah, we'll just take a swipe of it, I guess. Okay, let's come on this side. Let's uh, maneuver this where the, uh, the palette's not in the way. Right about here, good. Okay, and what we're gonna do now, there's texture on here, so you don't have to try as hard. Very light, uh, we'll go this way. It's very light, just kind of glaze it across. Glaze across, you see it skip? Let it skip, look at this, look. You go in any direction you want, it's going to give you that rocky texture. I'm going to borrow some of them over here and just kind of bring it there like that. Look at that swipe. Nice little swipe across. Okay. And just getting nice instant rock texture. Go light with it though. Go light. Okay. You can go around in circles if you want. All right. Just like that. Look how fast I just did that rock. Okay. <laughs> Vermont. Ah, I'm reading them. I'm reading what you're saying there, um, Bruce. Let's go here, here on the other side. Okay, and we're gonna we'll start from here, and we'll just kind of bring that across like that. Look at that. Look at that layer of texture, just like that. Leave a gap. Leave a gap. Go right from the edge, and you just spread out around like that. Go in this direction if you want. Let's take this and just kind of, and we'll bring something down this way like that. Loop it up. 
Look at that. A little swipe across. Let's do the same thing here. Just like that. I like that. Let's kind of make a play on that. All right. Then you leave it be. Don't bother it. Now what we have here um, with acrylic or oil based paint is that you've already created texture on top of the texture. Okay. So you got your darkest color. Now you got a mid-tone here. Now remember once this dries, it dries a little darker. So it had blended more. All right. But with it being so dark, once again, and larger, it brings everything else back. Okay. Now everybody knows this is water, but you notice that the water is not blue, but it will still register as water on this. Okay. All right. So we got a nice chunk of this uh, weird looking funky gray color. Okay. We're going to add some white to that funky gray color. And it just lightens up the color because we need highlights. All right. And we'll just keep stirring and playing, playing and stirring. Just like that. So we got a lighter version. As you can see, a lighter version of what we had already. The lighter the color, the less of it you need. We'll just do one of those numbers. Really thin. Get a nice thin swipe across there. The lighter the color, the less of it you need. Now, remember, light swipe. Now watch. You let the palette knife do the work for you. Okay. We're still in camera range. Let's go right. We'll go for it from the top here. Very light. Like this. And just bring it across like this. Now what's happening is that the, the palette knife is being picked up by the paint that we've previously had on there okay keep it pretty flat and just let the palette knife deliver the package okay you don't do every one don't try to do every nook and cranny it won't be necessary mainly your lights coming from the front anyway if something's highlighted then you just kind of highlight it on that one side okay all right let's get a little bit more let's go on the other side same premise same premise very lightly very lightly go across there that very light keep your your palette knife flat and just get a nice little brush across Up on top there You'll know when you don't have enough because you're going to go swipe and nothing will come off. Let's give them a little, a little something wrap in there like that. I think I'm running out, which is, you know, that's not, not the worst thing in the world. I get a little, little bit of white there. Get some of that residual gray there. Just like that. There we go. Nice little swipe across. And we'll kind of lightly come across there. Just like that. Now I've been doing this for a while. I kind of know when most of that paint comes off. Get some of that going right up in there like that. I don't need too much. Once again, the brighter you, you have, the less of it you need. Remember, keep those interesting pockets of dark in there, okay? Uh, I got a little bit of this bright stuff left. Very little bit. So we'll go to the edge of this rock. Yep, you guys can still see it. We'll go to the edge and add a little love here. Maybe in the front, like that. Just a little bit. I don't think I got any more left to really matter. Uh, yeah, we're all right here. We're, we're real okay. We're okay. We're okay. All right. Let's get a... Let's get a um, script liner. I have so many brushes in this bucket, it's hard for me to pick the script liner out. I just um, gathered all my brushes in one spot. 
believe it or not, even though I'm thumbing through everything, it makes it easier to locate locate these guys. <laughs> I located everything except the script lighter. That's alright, I got one. Alright. Let's throw in a Walmart Eagle. Let's just we'll use black. Black and some water. Inky consistency. This is one of my better script liners. For right now, who knows? Um we'll put one we'll put one guy. We'll put one guy. Let's put one. You know what? Let's put let's put one a nice size one right here. Let's put a nice wingspan on him. Right here. And then we'll put him put a nice give a nice size one right here. Give him a nice little wingspan right there. Right about there. And then we'll just take off little bit of titanium white and we'll plop his head right in there so he got a nice Walmart Eagle right there that's that type of Eagle you get right from the bargain store um let's go back to the black where do I determine where the light is coming from usually I will look at the clouds um really and 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 um actually in all actuality the clouds um it it, it looks like it, the light's coming from the opposite side of where the mountain is that's because there's not enough dark on this side so that's kind of my bad but you know what yeah it happens if i was more conscious of it i would uh I would, I would, um, I would have corrected it. Okay, and yeah, we're gonna get another. It's a two for one day, so we'll put another Walmart Eagle right there. Okay, all right. Uh, yep, you guys can see it. Okay, and let's pan back here. We're at the 90 minute mark, so I think we're good here. We're gonna we're gonna shut this um We're gonna shut this down. Let's get rid of him. Okay. Uh let's center it like that and we'll zoom in. Like so. I think we're good right about right about there. I'm gonna take the um let me sign my name on this somewhere. Uh, we'll, um, take the tape off. All right, I'll slap a signature right here real quick here. This was the flower from last night. I didn't like the flower from last night. There's a picture of it. That's about all I need is a picture. 21. It is already March. Can you believe it? Look at this already number three month three amazing okay let's take the tape off i do appreciate you guys coming in and uh i'm just grateful that there's actually people talk all uh, chatting my chats are usually very very quiet so i do appreciate the activity I think Bruce brought along some of his his family. I appreciate it. Um, you don't necessarily have to have a border. I prefer personally myself. I just prefer a border. It just looks a little more professional to me. That's just my opinion. Um, which is you know amounts to hamstring and shoehorns. So. Uh, 
No, you don't waste a can. You'll never know there was a flower on here at all. But there was. Um, this was last night. This was the flower. Um, I can say there was no glycerin added to this. Um, my glycerin lid is shut. Okay, here it is. It's the glycerin. Um, now, this is basically just um, paint uh, wet on dry. Okay, in a popsicle stick mountain. All right. Yeah, it's, uh, I don't know, a little more than, maybe a little more than a half inch, maybe. Um, but yeah, it does give room for a frame if you want to frame this. Um, this is a uh, canvas. Um, tr I'm, str I'm kind of straying away from the watercolor paper. Um, or I'll use a uh, canvas board, um, uh, foam board. I'll just use a roll canvas and I'll just glue, glue it onto uh, some foam board. And I can make any size I want. And plus it will be incredibly light. So it helps on postage, big time. Um, yeah, so. Yeah, well, here you go, guys. Um, simple, almost Bob Ross as he usually has little foothills and faraway trees or whatever, and there's some kind of alcove somewhere. Um, when I do little woodland scenes, mine's always tend to somehow, for some reason, kind of look like in this form. Um, or this variation a couple rocks a little lake and roll tree whatever um it's just something that i guess i'm on automatic pilot to do so yeah that's what i'll probably name this painting too popsicle steak mountain um so yeah um if anybody's interested in this thing, just send me a private message or on messenger or whatever. Um, I'll give it to you pretty cheap. Um, I'm going to varnish. I'll take a picture of it and I'll varnish it in a little while. After I take out the, uh, what surface do I use for a palette? Um, what you're looking, oh, let's put this back on for one minute. Actually, let's do something. Since you did ask, let's switch it. Let's put that there. And let's get rid of, uh, let's get, well, let's just put this picture over here somewhere. Okay, uh, this is actually a stay wet palette. Okay, um, there's a sponge there. You wet the sponge. I think the sponge is pretty decently soaked. Yes, it is. You just wet the sponge, you place your your paper there's paper special paper that comes with this okay this is a pretty small one as you can see by the size of my hand it's pretty tiny well pretty small um uh stay wet palette but i use this for quick stuff and whatnot if i don't want to waste paint um then i'll i'll use this okay but if i'm going to be here for a while and i really want to do something a little more detailed i'll just take this off and just use the glass palette all right, this, this palette is like awesome. Okay, you know, usually when I'm done with this, I just soak it in warm water, get my scraper and ch -ch -ch scrape it out as you, can, as you can see, scrape it as you can see and be done with it. And then that's that. But usually I just stick around with the, I'll stick with the, the stay wet palette there. I'll put the tape there and it just stays there. But I use a uh, stay wet palette, okay. All right, let's switch out of that. And let's get rid of that. But that's what I use. Hello, Junking Data Girl, how are you? Yeah, I get that a lot. No going green, Mom, you're not the only one. Trust me, um, I, I get that a lot. I guess it's a good thing. Well, at least they don't say I sound like P.B. Herman. You can buy them, um, Keeley. You can buy the Stay Wet palette, or you make it. You can make your own. Really, you know, but they're not really. Um, they're a whole lot uh, cheaper than those. Than those, than those expensive brushes, I, I'll tell you that. 
um, the glass palette was actually given to me as a gift. Oh man, they come in various sizes. Like the Stay Wet palette, they come in various sizes. So, um, but it's very handy because once you spray the sponge and you put the lid on it, um, which I'm about to do right now, it it stays forever. Uh, I mean, it can be over a week. Okay. Actually, I did it the wrong way. Hold on. Let's turn that back around. There we go. That's better. Now, um, today's Thursday. Tomorrow, I have another live painting, but that will be on the Home Artist Academy site. It is a free um, class. I will be on 2 o'clock. <laughs> Eastern Standard Time alright and then in a few hours after that I will be on Christy C C wow what is her name yeah Cr Chrissy's Corner with a K um, I will be on her um, YouTube uh, page and I will be auctioning off about 30 paintings um, that I have right here on the side of me as a matter of fact what type of paper would I use? Well, let's bring this back up. I'm glad you asked. Hold on. What type of paper? Well, it it, it depends. Now, if you can, if you can get it, you would get. Um, well, you get this. There you there you go. I'll I'll take the uh, small screen out of there. You guys don't need to see that. But there it is. Okay. Now this is a Masterson uh, Stay Wet palette, so I just got the uh, yeah eight by five by seven. That's what that is. But that's what you would use for a homemade Stay Wet palette. You would use wax paper. Okay. And I have used it. I've used um. I've used wax paper also. And as far as sponges, um, you can go to any any uh, store for sponges. Any uh, hardware store, they would have sponges of various sizes and shapes. And I do, I have um, the plastic that came with this board, I would, I would save. And I have quite a few down there and I would just tape up some plastic, um, tape up the plastic on a piece of cardboard or put some uh, typing paper on the cardboard, put the plastic over the cardboard, tape it up and I can use that as my palette. I do the same thing with wax paper. I'll cut the wax paper. I'll put a sheet of paper on the cardboard. Tape the wax paper. You get the wax paper, you tape it from the back. And you set it down. Um, and that's another palette. And when you're done with it, you just toss it. I would use like a couple sheets of wax paper. I've done that. I've used about a couple sheets of wax paper. Tape them to some typing paper on top of cardboard, and yeah, it'll stay. Um, I've used wax paper. I've used my palette knife on the wax paper. Um, after a while, yeah, you'll tear it up, but I use a couple of sheets at a time. Mookie Pookie, how are you? And thank you very much. Appreciate it. Let me see who else may have said hello. I don't want to forget anybody. Kathy's Corner. Yes. Thank you, Madonna. Everybody who's got these ideas, what mic am I using? I'm using a lapel mic. I could show you, but I, well, I mean, I can show you. I don't have my uh, other camera on. But here, it looks like that. And it's a powered one. Okay, it's powered. But that's what I use. I, I need a, 
<coughs> a lapel mic because I don't talk very loud. I'm just going up the uh, chat. <laughs> no, Keely. If I don't show the, if it do, I don't, if I don't show the palette, I'll describe what I'm doing. Does it matter if the knives are plastic instead of steel? Um, it depends on how heavy your hand is, but no, not really. I've used the plastic one on purpose because um, so people might not be able to afford or get a hold of uh, steel knives, so I use them both. Sandy Kirk, hello, how are you? Yes, you do hear a doggy. Well, 130 pounds of them. Yes, butcher paper might. Um, butcher paper holds, because butcher paper is made to hold fluids. So, yeah, that would be great. Yes, that is the barrel. So yeah, my tomorrow, oh no, tomorrow's Thursday, excuse me, I'll be on Friday live, Friday, twice, I'll be on, I'll be on twice on Friday. Oh, um, uh, Vermont, as you can see, no interruptions, but I am using a uh, webcaster, so maybe if we ever do it again, um, for some odd reason, um, it shouldn't do what it did uh, yesterday night. But we'll see. Any, any more questions while I'm here? And once again, I, I do appreciate everybody stopping through. It's been quite some time since I had such a lively um, chat. No, mine's is shorter. Mine's is not as tall. He's a um a bull mast of pit bull um mix and he's thirteen. It's funny, I could have went um, more and more with this, but it's not necessary. I think everybody kind of gets the gist of it, you know. But like I said, I've never, I've never painted a mountain with a popsicle stick. Credit cards, yes. Popsicle stick, no. So yes, I'll name it Popsicle Stick Mountain. How often do I do the website live lessons? Um, Wednesdays on my personal site here on uh, YouTube is, is um, every Wednesday around 6 or 7 o'clock. Monday is pre-recorded. I'm in the chat room with everybody. So Monday is at, at 7 o'clock. Um, Fridays... I am on the Home Artist Academy uh, website. And um, we're gonna be moving to paid lessons soon on, on, on that one. But I'm on at two o'clock Eastern Standard Time because it's 7 p.m. there. All right, uh, Sharon. Oh yeah, I'm I'm happy to have him, uh, Sharon. Uh, if he was full-blooded uh, Bo Mastoff, he wouldn't be here. He'd be dead already, because dogs of a certain size don't really live too long. Certain breed, yeah, they don't they don't live too long. So I know that that he's on the he's on the north side. So 
every time with him is kind of precious but he's still got plenty of uh of uh pep in his step pretty he's still pretty energized and um he's not showing any um any um breaking down yet of the joints or anything like that yep home artist academy Thank you, Vermont. I do appreciate it. My favorite dog is the Great Dane. And if you can if you can get 10 years out of that one, if you get 10 years, you're really lucky. Neapolitan Mastiffs don't even, sometimes they don't live to be five. It's two o'clock Eastern, but it's on the Home Artist Academy site. All you have to do is register. And only when you, um, you'll be able to go to the live ones because I'm not the only one that goes live um, but you'll be able to look at the the past um, zoom it's on zoom so you you can actually uh, um, talk to me so but the home artist Academy website um, their Facebook page is called learning to paint Yeah, Keeley, he's extremely spoiled. Might be part of the problem. It, it's like he owns the house and we, we just live in it. But yeah, he's spoiled. And it's, it's my fault. Alright guys, I do appreciate the conversation. I appreciate the questions. I do enjoy the questions. Um, this actually makes doing these a little more worth it when um, there's people who can who are uh, res um, responding. Where is my... Oh, there you are. I think I might need another battery for, or not a battery. I need to charge it. It's not as responsive. So I'm going to have to charge this thing. Oh, going green mom's gonna raid people. Thought they only did that on Twitch. Well, going green mom, I have plenty of past ones. Over 300. Take a. <laughs> you're gonna be there for a minute. Many different subjects, though. Okay, Vermont, a mix of what? Oh, are you talking about the dog? He's a um, bull master pit bull. There we go. All right, guys, let me get up out of here because I got to go walk him. Yeah, I have a cat too. It was a calico female. She was born on Valentine's Day. I'm just enjoying you guys chat, but I do got to get out of here. Once again, I hope to see you guys soon. Thank you very much, and I shall see you when I see you. Peace.